Hello, everyone. I think it's Sunday today. I'm forgetting every single day of the week ever since I lost my brain. I'm becoming stupider every day, and I don't know where I am. As we know, Reddit is one of those places where we go to either gain a lot of a lot of wisdom or maybe even lose some. Our intelligence is decreasing as the days go on. And as I go through Reddit, I find some days that I feel more and more a part of a beautiful community. Today's story is about DMT and schizophrenia. A Reddit user has posted, I know this probably, this is, and mind the words that this person has on here. Their, their English vocabulary is quite horrible. I know this probably all nonsense. But if the theory of all living organisms producing DMT is true, could it be that schizophrenia and psychosis itself is all tied to the DMT levels in your body? Could it be that all the hallucinations and delusions is just because there is a significantly more amount of DMT in the brain? I went through a full-blown psychosis myself. And it felt more like a spiritual experience. And I felt like I was God. And extreme time dilation. Okay. I know there is no explanation for the cause of schizophrenia and mental illness. So it could just be something scientists have yet to discover. Well, scientists have dug deep into it. I'm sorry to inform you, buddy. But your post is, uh, it's, uh, it's out of the question now. But I'll answer it for you. Uh, there's a lot of people in this group. There's over 200,000. And no one's taking care of you. There's no likes or dislikes on you. So I'm just coming in to say hi. I know a few people commented as well too. But I won't go into the details of those. Uh, they're just not that intelligent. And they're just speaking of ideas and stuff that just doesn't add up to what this person wants solved. And I'm wearing glasses today as everyone can see. And that's because if I wasn't wearing them, then I would look really dumb. I would, I would, my IQ would drop from 50 to like 35 if I, uh, if I didn't wear them. So, you know, I need to wear them. So, and this makes sense that this Redditor would post that. I feel like it was a spiritual experience. Uh, there has been studies shown that the psychosis of schizophrenia is similar to having that feeling of a god complex <laughs> for sure i literally just spilt water all over my desk i had to clean it up sorry about that people so yeah back to the dmt and the schizophrenia with the god complex i would say the spiritual experiences that happen a lot of people and i think it was around like 15 to 20 percent feel like a spiritual entity is talking to them and that is a study that was done uh, and posted. It was posted on the National Center for Biotechnology Information. It's an organization which takes together serious matters and really in-depth experiences uh, and experiments that they have done on people or uh, different objects, um, ideas as well too, uh, philosophies, just anything in between and why it makes sense and, you know, how... They got their stats done in a scientific way, right? So it's a national center for biotechnology information. And to keep it simple, that's just what it is. They've done a lot of different studies. And on a couple of their links here, uh, they did a, they, there was a study done in 1976 in November. And it says urinary dimethyltryptamine and psychiatric symptomatology and classification. Uh, the abstract of it, so it goes into detail of how abstract uh, this is, so it'll go into high detail. And to cut that short as well, too, for my sake and for everyone else's, I've looked into this. The excretion of dimethyltryptamine, DMT, was studied amongst 122 recently admitted psychiatric patients and 20 normal subjects as well, too. So they don't just take in people that are known to have psychosis they take in people that are normal as well too or people that see without psychosis dmt was detected in the urine of 47 percent of the diagnosed by their psychiatrists as schizophrenic 
So that's extremely important to note that DMT is in that many people, but how many people is it in that are normal per se or with less uh, less psychotic illnesses? So 38% of those with other non-effective psychosis is 13% of those with effective psychosis is 19% of those with neurotic and personality disorders and 5% of normal subjects as well too. So as you can tell, they took a lot of different people that were in the psychotic era and they did different studies on each of them. And even if they took like, hey, there's 122 of them and say 100 of them were actually psychotic, then this is where you're getting the 100% out of your answer when it comes to breaking down each individual. Of course, it's not always 100% with everything, but they sure nailed it when they added so many people inside of it, which is extremely important in their role in p playing position and figuring out what's really happening within the DMT sector of it. This study also goes in a little more detail where they go over it again just to define it in a more proposed way for what we do now know of schizophrenia. So you, Mr. Redditor, I can change your story a little bit, maybe give you an opening to what has been in your mind and your thoughts on DMT and schizophrenia. So uh, 99 patients were interviewed in a semi-standardized fashion and also categorized accordingly. So like I said, they were organized properly according to the definitions of psychosis. That's where they get the percentages out of. Just so you know, they're repeating the same thing just for you layman's term kind of people, but just makes it easier for you. The operation definitions failed to reveal any group significantly more correlated with the urinary DMT than a hospital diagnosis of schizophrenia, but a discriminate function analysis of symptomatology could be used to define a group of 21 patients of whom 15, 71% excreted detectable DMT. There was a general relationship between psychotic symptoms and urinary DMT, but specifically schizophrenic symptoms did not appear to, the, to be the major determinations of DMT excretion, which makes sense, right? We're figuring out what's going on with schizophrenia. Now, to get to the bottom line of this, we do have to understand that there are different roles that play with schizophrenia itself and the other studies that have been made. So what about people that are more on the normal end? There was a study done on that as well too, not just people with psychosis, but there were there were many other people that were in a different study, uh, a separate one in 2015. Oh wow, this is, uh, wow. All right, the link for this study is drug test to anal. So they're getting quite anal and into it with this one. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail with this one, but DMT rose to 10 to 28% of people that were taking DMT within 24 hours of a held in urine test and to have it uh, excreted out. They did a test on, uh, I think it was like, let's see here, 24, there were 24 hour urine samples from six DMT users. So they did a smaller representation, but it rose from 10 and 28, from around 10 to 28 percent. So there was unmetabolized DMT and DMT, uh, whatever else. There's like 400 different numbers in this thing. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna have a brain aneurysm. Like I said, like my IQ, it looks like it increased like 10 points from like 30 to like 50, which is actually 20 points, which is um, would be amazing for my standards in the way that I describe things to people. But they did another study on it, and the significant value of DMT didn't even nearly get close to the schizophrenics, which is just, uh, you know, it's something that you have to take in consideration with this. Now, we wonder why and how does DMT and schizophrenia go in hand in hand? Well, Really, it's dopamine and schizophrenia. It's called the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia, where you limit the 
uptake of dopamine inside of their brains because they have an overreactive dopamine receptor and you limit that and what happens is it lowers the uh, some of the psychosis values inside of it itself too. Uh, Wikipedia also does say that some research it, some researchers have suggested that dopamine systems in the meso uh, limbic pathway may contribute to the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, right? Which is the dopamine uptake, the increase of it. Whereas problems concerning dopamine function with the mesoterical pathway, which is the uh, a dopaminergic pathway that connects the ventral peg pegmentum to the prefrontal cortex, it is one of the four major dopamine pathways in the brain. It is essential for normal cognitive function and the dorsolateral prefrontal cor cortex. I'm learning a lot from this stuff as we speak. It's just so hard to say words when your IQ is like 30. So, may the mesotorical pathway may be responsible for the negative symptoms such as avolition and elogia or elogia. I don't know how to say those either. If you do, then you're probably a scientist. Avolotion is a symptom of various forms of psychopathology, is the decrease in the ability to initiate and persist in self-directed purposeful activities. Activities that appear to be neglected usually include routine activities, including hobbies, going to work and or school, or even hanging out with like friends or like finding the social activities with other people, which makes sense when you have schizophrenia too, right? Like it sort of inhibits you when you're having psychotic breaks to hang out with people. And that's just a part of it. Sometimes people are really social on it. Like I'm not judging anyone. It just is what it is. And I hope everyone gets the help and support that they need. The elogia or the elogia is poor thinking uh, inferred from speech and language, which I sound like I'm having right now when I'm speaking to the people in the camera. Uh, uh, there may be a general lack of additional unprompted content seen in normal speech, so replies to questions may seem brief and concrete with less spontaneous speech. It's like for an, it, which is odd because it's like okay, so I'm having like a spiritual uh, feeling happening in my body, like the Reddit user that wants to know about DMT and schizophrenia and the correlation between those two together. What that means for them is just okay. So things that come up on the top of my head. Uh, they just don't want to like have them out or they just don't happen as much. That's what it seems to me that maybe it's talking about. But uh, this term is, uh, this is termed poverty of speech or laconic speech. So other people get this too for many other illnesses, abnormal expression uh, in different receptors in the brain. So the dopamine is just out of whack. So to answer your question, Mr. Redditor, it's the dopamine. But in the back end of it, people are still questioning how we get to see the, uh, the information. Well, there's parts of your brain that are expanded um, inside of the center of your brain, and some of them are just like cross-networking each other a little too much, sort of like an artist would. And you're mixing them all up, and it's getting all out there. And uh, Schizophrenic has posted on TikTok as well, too, that I watch quite frequently. And they go into explaining that it's sort of like the black box of... Uh, something that you really can't see, like P Pandora's box, if you may, where you go into it, and then, like, inside of there, it, it makes sense to them. It's like information's going in and coming out of there, just like the same way as the uh, the brain waves in the way that they're structured to just connect with each other back and forth, and then now you're coming out with everything. Um, it's like all your thoughts are coming to life inside of that box. Even if you think that maybe they aren't your thoughts, your brain is always going on and on and creating scenarios and uploading um, information and uh, outputting it consistently throughout the day, especially when you sleep. But we're finding it odd with the DMT in there. Maybe it, DMT has something to do with the way that the pineal gland works as well, too, um, when it's sending out the psychotic images as well, too, which people have when they sleep. But they say it's quite different. So anyways, yeah. The bottom of the line is we don't know everything about schizophrenia, but we have uh, a bigger and a vast majority of what we do know compared to what was like back in 1970, which is quite awesome for a study that they did back then being in 1970. And they're looking at 
the relationship between DMT and schizophrenia inside of urine. And they did a study in 2016 of May to see what's happening actually with the DMT inside of people that have taken it within 24 hours with those six people. And then now we're at back at the Redditor. Thank you very much for giving your idea or your story out. It gave me something really cool to talk about today. And I thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like. If you are just wanting to check out something else, just do it. Like, check out my channel, man. I got a lot of weird shit. This is a long video. I don't normally make them 15 minutes long. I usually call this the 15 minute, the 10 minute podcast, but now it's like the 15 minute. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy, check out my videos. Leave a like, leave a comment. Just have fun. We don't need haters here. Haters just, they won't be acknowledged and they're just pieces of garbage. Anyways. Love ya. Bye.